Today I am going to be demonstrating a fall floral with Derwent Ink Tents. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I have actually not finished my project. You can see it's behind me and there's a big white spot. But don't worry, it will be finished by the end of this video. If you are new to the Inktense line, this is a water soluble ink. It is not watercolor. I do have a full review on this medium that you can check out on this video. If you're supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you guys now, complete with voiceover. Now let's get on to this demonstration. To start this video out, I want to show you how I'm using water with a paintbrush on the ink tense blocks to create my ink mixture. This is how I am painting throughout the majority of this piece. If you don't see the pencils in my hand, this is how I'm mixing my color to apply it to the paper with the paintbrush. You can see I'm just adding water and you can mix multiple colors by doing this. So even if you have a small set of 12, you can get so many colors out of it by mixing your, your different ink blocks. Once I get the color that I want, this is actually a clip from my Flamingo video a couple of months back, so definitely not the colors I'm using here, but once I get the color I want, I can start on my actual project. I've drawn everything out on my Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper with a water soluble graphite pencil first. I went with water soluble so that as I added my ink, that graphite pencil wouldn't show through. The pencil that comes in the ink tent set is not supposed to lift off or smudge when adding the ink on top of it, but I don't want those lines to stay permanently. So that's why I go with the water soluble one. This is one by Faber-Castell. So I've started by just sketching in loosely all of the wood grain in the table. I don't care if the wood grain is perfect, I just need it to be close so that I get the general feel of wood grain. I'm then, once that dries, I'm doing a glaze of a darker brown on the shadowed area of the piece. With the ink tents, I like to sketch in my darkest portions first, let that dry, and then glaze my lighter colors over it. And when I say darkest colors, I don't mean make the whole background black, that's not going to work either. But you can see my detailed lines, the little dark details, I put those in first, and you can still see them underneath all of the layers I put on top. You do wanna go lighter than you think you're going to need to be in the end, uh, because it is really easy to darken things up. It is a lot harder to get them lighter. It's possible if you've got the white ink tense block because you can put the opaque white, let it dry, and then glaze a color on top. But it's easier if you just go lighter to start with. I hope that made sense. So I'm building up the first of my two roses. And I'm going back and forth between the two. That way, while one dries, I can work on the other. Then while that one dries, I can work on the first one, which should be dry. So just a little bit of a time saver there. I can also sit with a hair dryer and dry them to make it go a lot more quickly. Now this medium is a bit more forgiving than colored pencil, but I still recommend start out with an accurate drawing so that you're not fighting your drawing throughout the piece. It'll make your life a lot easier. So if your drawing doesn't look quite right, don't think, oh, I'll fix it when I start painting. Fix it now before you start painting. And I like to use the ink tense blocks with the, the water mixed in like this on the paintbrush to put my first layers down. If you put the ink tense blocks directly on the paper and then add water, you end up with a bit of a grainy gritty look, which is fine if that's the look you want. It is not what I wanted, so that's why I made my pre-mixed ink here and did that first. Then when I get to the final layers, I'll switch over to the ink tense pencils and do my final details there, but they don't end up looking too gritty because I already have this base layer down. You can see with that orange flower, I did the same thing. I put in the darker portions, let them dry, and then put the lighter colors on top. It's very important though that you let those darker colors dry. If you don't, when you put the lighter colors into it, it will all smudge together, but it doesn't take too long to dry. So on these flowers here, I'm blocking in the darkest areas with this dark burgundy color, outlining them. For the majority of this piece, I'm using a round Taclon bristled brush. I've got a couple of filberts and flats mixed in, but mostly it's this round. Now for the ribbon, notice that I left areas of white showing through so that it looks nice and shiny. Now that my first layer on these flowers is dry, I can go through, I'm using the Ink Tense Pencil with these deeper browns to add contrast into those flowers. 
Now, while you can technically do all of this with just the blocks or all of it just with the pencils, I think they work so nicely together. I would not enjoy this medium as much if I didn't have both, but if I had to choose just one, it would probably be the blocks. Let's see, adding detail and getting the shadows in there. Now for this section, I'm just loosely blocking in all my general shapes. There's a lot of busyness going on in there, doing a lot of outlining. All that will be softened up once I glaze over it. Throughout this, if I had had any major mistakes, I would have used that oh, the white ink tense block, mixed water with it, with a paintbrush, and applied the white to any mistakes I had made, and then let it dry and painted over it. Here again on the pumpkin, you can see I am back to doing the dark areas first, and then glazing the light over that. What you really can't tell in this video is that I am letting it dry in between layers so that I don't smudge things. If you want to blend one color to another, you definitely can, all while it's still wet. But if you want to layer, let it dry in between so that you don't get muddy colors. As I get towards the end of the piece, I will switch to mostly using the pencils to clean up my edges and refine some of the details. It's a lot easier to do with the pencils at that stage than it is with the paintbrush, but like I said, it can be done either way. Hyping up my contrast a bit. And that is it for this piece. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this demonstration is available for you now, complete with voiceover. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. But you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Unless I do like I did last week and completely forget to upload the video on Thursday. In my defense, I was over at the storage unit getting the last of my stuff out of storage and putting it away and I was just busy and completely forgot. That night, by the time I realized what I had done, I was just so exhausted I didn't even care anymore. That's how you know I'm really, really tired when I don't care that I completely missed out on a video. I think that's the first time I've done that in years.